Hey guys, welcome back to Enshrouded. So I've made some progress. As you can see, my armor here, uh, weapon is a pike meets bow arc and a sword, which is the hail scourge. These are both done by a NPC quest. You can find it here. Uh, this one, buried treasure, and then one is the queen's tomb. They're very close nearby. The queen's tomb, yeah, this one. So these are guaranteed their NPC quest to give you like the best loot you can find kind of in this kind of period. Right now I'm over here in Volkar Ceremony, which is another NPC quest, which is outlined somewhere here. Um, this one. So it gives me a head, which I think is a boss. And then it'll probably give me some kind of like new stuff or something. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so I'm interested in tackling this. Um, initially, I thought I was supposed to go to this area, but this is like level 15 area, which is way higher level. Um, so I went in this way, and this is more like level 9 area, so it seems like this is the direction you're supposed to go. Like from here, you can loop over here, and then you go over this way. I, I've also found that like these flame shrines drop sparks, which is this stuff, spark, um, which lets you upgrade your flame level. Uh, and you have to defeat like some kind of boss to, as like a milestone kind of thing before you can unlock the next flame level, uh, which gives you like stats to everything. So you have attributes here. You can see like it says uh, personal zero, flame best is two. The two comes from the flame level here. You get basically primary stats two for flame level three, um, and so on and so on. It'll keep on going up. Uh, so I have been upgrading skills like jump tag, double jump. Double jump is actually extremely broken in my opinion because you can basically parkour onto any kind of surface. Which is, uh, you can like basically get past things because the game is balanced based on a single jump format. So when you can double jump, you can skip through a lot of things. Like you can scale mountains and stuff like this is normally not reachable if you don't have double jump but now you can uh, which means all melee mobs can't actually hit you which to me sounds super broken so this is like a, kind of like a boss i think so that's why i wanted to start recording um and watch myself get wrecked wow this boss is extremely tanky My estimate is there's about 2,000 health, which means I'm going to have to avoid a lot of hits. That does not look like a really... Oh yeah, I've also got an Eternal Spell. Um, what Eternal Spells are is that they're infinite use spells. Oh, this looks like a buff. Oh yeah, that's a buff. That's a buff arm. Okay. Yeah, so it's not too tough. At least it doesn't feel that tough. Uh, oh. I was hoping I had that blue potion which increases my attack damage, but I don't think I, I brought it out with me, unfortunately. I don't know how much damage he's gonna do if I get hit. I feel like that's kind of like a counter move so i'm not gonna attack him when he's okay not too bad is he summoning more enemies or something nope okay i i have a lot of potions now so it's not really an issue even if i get hit like i used to use bandages and it was like really hard to heal but farming actually gives me a lot of uh materials so now i'm really well stocked on all things wow i can't dodge this why like i've been getting hit every single time yeah, i think maybe jumping is better than dodging funny enough like a long jump is way better than rolling out of the way i think at least for this boss okay he's in guard mode again i don't want to attack him while he's guarding okay 
definitely has more than 2,000 health though. I think he has like 3,000 or close to 4,000 because I've been hitting him a lot. Oh, he's weak to bow. I should just use bow. I don't actually like magic in this game still. I still think magic kind of sucks. Because it uses like mana points. And then it needs to regenerate and you can't spam it. So, so it feels like... Uh, bows are better than... Like, I think melee is definitely the most important. And then bows are probably like the next best thing. Because it's ranged like magic, but you can spam it. And it's very easy to make arrows too. And you can bring a bunch with you, so... I don't really see the point of magic in this game. At least not right now. Perhaps later on you'll get some like really good stuff. Okay, that was actually not too bad. Uh, and now I get his head as well. Level 9 wand. I have something better than that already. Okay, so I beat this guy. This big boy. Uh, is that it? Well, let's just go over here to this question mark too. So one of the best things about double jump and how it breaks the game, because normally you can't get past this thing, but you can with double jump. I don't even know why they added like fall damage to this game, because like as long as you use glide, you don't take any damage, no matter how far, how high up you drop from. So it's like, why did you include that into the game if it's not really that hard to get around it? I wonder if they'll eventually remove it. So this is a camp of these fur dudes. Yeah, normally these guys aren't hard to beat at all. Because the double jump attacks move gives me bonus damage, so they mostly die in two hits. Which makes it very easy. Oh. Wow, I haven't seen that happen before. Okay, it's the first time I've actually seen one of these camps because I haven't been to this area. So, it's very interesting to see that there's a bunch of fur guys. Uh, doesn't seem to be like really good loot anywhere though. What's the point of me coming here? Like, I got a bunch of fur guys. I killed them all, but they didn't really give me anything good. This is all just very standard loot. None of it is good. There's not even a chest. I feel like I kind of wasted my time coming here. Well, at least now I know to... Oh, what is this? Is this important? Is this rubble? Yeah, it's just rubble. I still don't have any idea what rubble does. So far, it feels like it's kind of useless. Uh, oh, there's a chest. Uh, gave me magic vault, wisp of light. Wisp of light is decent. I haven't used it once, though. Because I usually can't see anything at night, so I just go all the way back to base, and then I rest and take go another. Okay, so these are really good for animal fur, I think. Like, that's probably the whole point of fighting these fur boys. It's just to get animal fur, uh, and then that's it. Because all this other stuff is completely useless. Or, or at least, like, not worth the effort. And this is just flintstone, right? I don't need flint. Yeah, I haven't really found a great use for flintstone either. So it's, like, it's not super exciting to dig into this. Unless there's something... Is this... No, this really is just plain flintstone. This is useless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, flintstone is not useful. Useful? Like, it's good for making, like, flint arrows, but you don't really need that much. Or maybe there's something that's really important with flintstone that I haven't found yet, but for at the moment, I don't see it as an important resource. This is... 
giant mushroom land. Which is also not super important. Okay. Being attacked by wolves. And I think the thing that I'm trying to get to is right below here. But I see a bunch of red. Which means it's very dangerous for me to just jump down there as much as I like to. Because uh, you die pretty much instantly if you land on the Red Sea kind of looking thing. So I need to find the proper way down. Uh, this looks better. Nope. I think I trapped myself. Uh-oh. This is not good. I should have taken a turn down there. Okay. Um... So in this scenario, because I have double jump, this lets me jump a little bit better. Higher up, so I can start making like a kind of flat-ish surface to move around and navigate. Oh, I can probably reach that. Yeah, so you can see how double jump is completely like bonkers. I'd say it's probably the most important skill to get in this game. Like... Double jump is so good in that it helps you overcome like a lot of obstacles in this game. Like you can just double jump up here, double jump up here. Like you can get, get through everything with a single jump. But with double jump you unlock so much more possibilities at transversing the same place. Which uh, is a lot more fun in my opinion. And it also saves a lot of time. So it's like definitely worth investing into getting um, but yeah, not necessary to actually beat the content in this game, but definitely worthwhile. These Shroud Liquids are actually also really useful. You can collect them for Fire Magic, Chain, Heal Magic, and all that stuff. I haven't found the Eternal Spells for that yet, but... Huh? Oh, there's something down below. That means there's something like a cave that I can go into? Yeah, but I have to make sure to be careful and go into... Oh, do I have a... Oh, no. I used up all my flame altars, so I can't make a checkpoint here. Yeah, one of the things is, like, when you're exploring, it's always a, a good idea to... Oops. Popped up. Had a pop-up. But it's always a good idea to, like, make a bunch of checkpoints so you can, like, teleport back if you need to. Um, and you can, like, return to the base quickly. That's one of the good things about this game. It's like you can make a lot of flame altars, and then they're basically like checkpoints that you let teleport back and forth between two areas. I don't see any enemies here except for this shroud. Ooh, well, I'm just gonna break it then. See, I, I think this is extremely strange to me. Like, I don't understand why there's like no enemies in a random shroud root here. Shroud root. And then I can break and that's that. That's the, that's the entire thing. That's it. Literally, that is the only thing here. I feel like they're going to add more here, like a mini boss or something. But at the moment, this is all that this place has to offer. It's just one random shroud root. And then you have like a bunch of other stuff here, which I don't know what's there yet. Um, but I haven't found a lot of point in exploring anything that isn't marked on the map because it's just randomly generated loot or something. So nothing too important there. Um, but yeah. Got a new boss, which was pretty cool. Giant furry beast. And then you can also kind of farm these bosses. They come back after a set amount of time. So that's going to be an important boss to go back to. Uh, I haven't fought this fell warven head yet, and I only found one amber. There's probably like a better place to get amber, which I haven't figured out. Um, this is easy to get. This is easy to get. <clears throat> Copper ore is very easy to get. I know where to find the fell dude, though. The fell warven is uh, over here. You have to f go to the capital and get to pike meat, which I assume is also where you start getting a lot of amber. But the issue with this place is that it's all the way over here, which is from here. Yeah, you have to go all the way up north, which is very far. And there's no armor upgrades before you get to that place. Like, I have a bunch of stuff that I've explored, and none of these give me proper upgrades. So I'm still using this really low-level uh, armor. 
which is like this this armor set that I got when I was like level eight, and I'm still using it, which is like ridiculous because I'm already I've been using it for so many levels now. Um, so I think there's a lot of upgrades that you're supposed to get from these NPC quests. So that's why I'm going through them one by one. Haven't really found anything super exciting yet. Uh, I know these weapons were from the NPC quests. I'm hoping there's some armor set that's way better than this. Uh, or some kind of crazy recipe. But so far it's getting really tough to travel up north. Mainly because the enemies are basically two-shotting me. And there's a lot of them. Uh, anything that's like level 15 hits super hard. So this game is challenging. Um, but in a good way because it's it's hard so I do like a challenge but I just wish there was like a little gap closer between the things like I can't I can already find like all these kind of cool stuff like the kettle table saw here you can make uh, find it I had to run through a bunch of enemies to grab it uh, you can make more like but with, with iron bars which is really far away you can't even get that i don't know where to find iron yet so i'm assuming it's a really late game resource so i'm stuck with one iron saw like one iron saw is the only kind of uh wood table manufacturing thing i can make but it's not a big deal because it's i guess it's kind of like a late game item or something but i don't know where to get crucible which you can make here, but you need sand. So the only thing I'm missing is sand, but I have no idea where to get it. I looked online, it says that you can only get it at like a, the desert area, which is like the fifth zone. Which sounds like extremely super late game. Like, what would the fifth zone be? Like all the way up here? Considering like the north is more like that. It's like more of a, I don't know, deserty place. But that sounds super far to me, and I don't know... How you can even like get past this area right now uh because i die in three hits when i try to travel up north but i've already pretty much explored the east too because there's nothing left here so yeah this game it uh, feels like there's a little bit of a curve that it needs to fix right now like add some intermediary uh, armor sets or something because like having one more set from this a level 10 set would be perfect but i don't have a level 10 set like i do have a level 13 set but i can't get amber and i don't have linen and i think linen is part of this quest uh the hunter's handsman though which is over here which is all the way up here again um but this one is probably i can probably get that because i made a base here um and I can probably do these quests as well. But these guys are already level 15 or 13. So it's very tough to travel this area. Which is why I've been focusing on the Selvern part. But I'm getting to the point where there's not much left for me to explore. I've pretty much done everything I can in this area. Um, so it seems like it's about time to head up north. But in other words, I've been working on farming. Uh, which is really great. Once you collect a resource, you can easily duplicate seedlings. Which generate more. So you can just kind of take this and then you can plot it down on the ground and then after some time it will just grow and then you'll have all these resources available for picking. Um, there's also like this kind of stuff like you can build, you can have all these seeds. There's a bunch of recipes. You have like, uh, this one's really easy. It just makes trees if you want to grow a tree. But I don't see why these ones you would do, uh, spend the resources to do. Um, as easy as it is to do, to make, you can just kind of run around the place and there's trees everywhere, you just cut it down. So I don't see any reason to use that, but these ones are actually really good. I don't know how to get this fossilized bone dust, I haven't seen it yet, so it's not something I can actually make. But everything else, like, super easy to make, you can just make some Ireland, you get some flour, and it makes five each. So you can get five flowers for one flower, and so it scales exponentially. Charmoil... Cha chamoimini? I don't know how to pronounce that word, but same thing. Uh, corn, flax, beet, berry bush, strawberry, shrubs. Shrubs is probably like the most efficient thing. You can just kind of like stack a bunch over here. And when you're low on plant fiber, you can just collect all of it. Uh, and then once you collect all of it, you can just stick some back in there and then you have like an endless cycle of plant fiber. You don't have to hunt for it anymore, which is extremely helpful. 
Um, yeah, but the most important part about food is basically like this lady here, the farming NPC. She get, makes a lot of these great foods where you have like seven stamina regeneration for five minutes. And it takes corn cob and honey. Only issue is that you can't make a fireplace yet. Um, at least not at this point. Um, but you can see like I, I'm just preparing way in advance because like 35 minutes of dexterity boost. That's crazy. And there's like five health regeneration two endurance with and all you need is like chamoy mili with water which is like just tea it's super easy to make and you can get all these kind of crazy benefits that last for a really long time only bad thing is like you need fireplace but i don't know how to get that yet because this is a fireplace and it doesn't work for her so you need some kind of different fireplace yeah and the most important thing about farming here is also the npc here you can make like uh health potions like honey water and then chamomile like this one is definitely the most important i have berry farms and honey you can just get as you run around the map so you can start using these upgraded health potions or you can just have this really easy one where it's just mushrooms berries and water uh, i've made a lot of these because i don't have that much health yet um and you can see like this is earl in flower for heo channel and chain chain uses the other flower so Farming is extremely important. You need to farm a lot of stuff. This one, tar, is extremely easy to get. You just need to make it in the uh, little thing here. Tar is just the recipe here where it's just wood and dirt. And wood acid is just wood and dirt. Charcoal is also wood and dirt. So, very easy. A lot of these recipes are very easy. Um, and I think that's about it. Um... Oh yeah, you can put heads on a trophy thing. I guess since I don't need this, I can actually make this decoration. Sure, let's do it. It's the first one I've actually put, so... I guess I can put it here. Yeah, that looks good. I don't think I've actually shown off my base, but it's uh, extremely big now. And I realize I have to make it two floors high in order to put these chandeliers. Because otherwise it's too it's too short. And it gets into the table, so I have to put it up here. Which feels a little bit high, but I don't think there's too much of a choice. Because I don't want to make it like, like one and a half and then dangle it here. Because uh, it's just hard to plan when it's not like the full size. Um, but yeah. I made a secret little door here, which opens up very slowly, and it goes into my super deep hole. I was testing to see how deep I can dig it, and uh, actually, surprisingly, it goes super deep. So, this was really cool. Like, I didn't think I could dig this deep, and I can. So now I have a super deep hole in my base, uh, and I think I'm going to probably expand it and make, like, a cellar, which is, like, really cool. I can put, like, some cellar stuff dungeon barrels and all that stuff but hopefully there's something else that i can do underground i might put some npcs down there so then i have like this giant castle to myself up here and then the npcs will be down there but considering how you actually have to talk to the npc to be able to do anything i might not do that because it's just gonna make it more annoying but we'll see lots of things to decide lots of flexibility to build um which is great and like one of the perks of double jumping is you can kind of clip onto the sides of things so you can like don't really have to use the ladder see how funny this is like you just kind of clip on and then you land on top so yeah um so far i think the game's pretty good um it's a little basic in terms of combat and i think magic sucks um, but other than that i don't have too many complaints i think the games are uh, the game's pretty good I'm hoping that there's going to be more random events in the future. Like, right now, everything feels very scripted. Like, the entire game is labeled, listed with, like... I think these are all handcrafted. I don't think it's RNG generated. Like, you do it once and that's it. Um, so, I do wish there's, like, some kind of randomly regenerating stuff that you can kind of revisit or redo or something like that. Like, to farm resources, but but this is already pretty good um there's a lot of content already so i'm pretty satisfied with this it's just if you ask me if there's anything that can be improved on i would hope for that for just a little bit more replayability and more reason to revisit the same areas again 
Um, I do think there's like a lack of different enemies, but considering I've only been in this kind of area, which is called like the spring woods or something. So maybe when I visit the other biomes, there's going to be way more stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, I've been playing this game for close to like 20 hours, uh, but it's been roughly the same. So I haven't been making more videos because it's just this kind of like the same stuff. Once I get into the new biome, I'll probably record a little bit just to get the feel. But the entire area here looks very similar, you know, like there's shroud everywhere. And then there's like woods, trees, lots of trees, berries, fruits and all that stuff, which is nice to see. But it gets kind of dull when everywhere kind of looks the same. So I can't wait till I get to those snowy areas or like those reddish areas. But yeah. Nighttime looks pretty cool, but I don't like how it gets so dark to the point where you can't see anything. I hope they, like, add a kind of, like, light kind of thing with me. I don't really like using potions for light. Especially since, like, potions sometimes might give you, like, a debuff because it's an elixir. Or maybe this one doesn't. Actually, I'll just use it now. Yeah, so I have, like, a tiny wisp that makes everything red. This is not going to be useful for traveling at night because everything's so red. I mean, it's better than nothing. But it's like such a pinkish hue. But at least you don't lose... I mean, at least you don't get a debuff. So that's good. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyways, I think that's uh, all I have to show for now. As like a mid-progress kind of report. Kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.